Hi, friends. Today we are talking about a hot topic, and that is decluttering burnouts. Okay. If you are someone who has a tendency to feel like the only way to be successful in decluttering is to throw yourself into the deep end when you don't know how to swim and you're not wearing water wings, then this call is for you. And if you are someone who identifies as being a perfectionist and is never happy with your progress, this call is also for you. Okay. If you are someone who is struggling with all or nothing thinking, uh, and just telling yourself, you know, you know what, I'm never going to finish. It's never going to, I'm never going to be happy with it. Uh, it's never going to stay completely clutter free. And then this calls also for you. So um, here's the thing when it comes to decluttering and burnout and perfectionism. Okay. Burnout and perfectionism tend to be closely tied together. And the reason I say that is perfectionism is something that actually holds you back. If you were raised in a family where uh, you were taught to believe that you have to work hard, that you have to throw 100% of yourself into it all the time, that you need to go and go and go and you're constantly running on that hamster wheel, you will hit burnout. So decluttering is most successful when we do B minus work and we lower the bar. And if you are someone who is constantly a bar raiser, right? If you're someone who's like, oh, I did this, but I could have done this better. And that I could have worked for longer. And then I could have achieved more. That can make you feel really uncomfortable. Okay. And I get it. I am, um, I am someone who was a bar raiser. I sometimes still have to catch myself, but I realized that it was actually just causing me to spin my wheels. I was never happy with my progress. Uh, it made me frustrated. It made me just want to quit. The other thing is that decluttering is also more successful if we are changing our habits over time. So you can absolutely, you know, if you have a cluttered bedroom, you can go in and go, you know what? I'm going to spend like three hours. I'm just going to go at it from top to tail. I'm going to nail it and we're good. But then, you know, three weeks, four weeks passes and the clutter has crept back in and you're shocked and you're like, well, see, this is what always happens because I totally spent all those hours. It never works anyways. Here's the thing, you had a goal and that was to declutter your bedroom, but you didn't have a system in place, right? I call that conquering. So you conquered it, but you didn't have a system in place to defend it, right? You weren't maintaining it. So, you know, low and slow happens to, to work out very well in decluttering. Why? Because we are changing our habits 1% at a time. And if you have ever read the book, Atomic Habits by James Clear, highly recommend it. He talks about you about having a higher degree of success of changing a habit long term if you change that habit 1% daily. So 1% a day isn't asking a lot of us, right? You could have a space and decide to show up for like five minutes a day, 15 minutes a day. And that's 1% change. And you may be saying, oh my gosh, Lainey, you haven't seen my space. That is ridiculous. What are you talking about five minutes a day? Five minutes a day over a hundred days is over eight and a half hours of work. And you don't hit burnout. 10 minutes a day over the span of a week, right? Is over an hour of work. What you're aiming for is slow amounts of change so that you can build new habits so that you don't go from all or nothing, where it's totally cluttered, totally decluttered, creeping back up to being totally cluttered again. And I think that it's so important to hold on to the idea that the goal is really not to be clutter free. I think that if we are human beings interacting with the space, it's very easy for clutter to show up again. But if we have a change of habits, right, 1% change, if we have a system in place to support those change in habits, and the system is consistently checking in with a space to you know, make sure that the clutter isn't creeping back in, the system is also having less stuff in our space because the less things that we have taking up prime real estate in our homes, the less we have to manage over time, right? Then that will lead us to an overall goal of having a decluttered space 
not necessarily clutter free, clutter free to me, at least. And it's semantics, really. Right. But clutter free means kind of sort of aims towards perfection. I'm not a big fan of the word, but decluttered meaning is meaning that it's more manageable. Right. I am changing my habits one percent at a time. I have a system in place so that way the clutter just doesn't rebuild to the extent that it did before. So I'm more in control of my space versus my space being in control of me. And that's going to help you reach your overall goal. Okay. We don't want to burn ourselves out to reach the goal, right? That's not what this is about. Decluttering is a long game. Okay. It's about learning new habits. It's about building systems to sustain those habits so that you can reach that goal of a decluttered space. I hope that helps. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Take care, everybody.